Hey everybody, welcome back to Conscientious Omnivore. My name is Pal. Super excited today, going to be sharing with you guys an updated uh, cornbread recipe. Um, a long, long time ago, you may remember I did a video with a cornbread recipe. Um, that one is crazy easy and uh, it was the first time I ever made cornbread and it comes out great. Um, nothing against the recipe um, per se, but uh, I have uh, for quite a while now been using a different recipe because I prefer this one. It's more Whole foods uh, defi uh definitely better in the sense that it doesn't have oil in it. So I, uh, I actually have been using this one for a little while. And uh, I found this recipe from a video, and I can't remember the title of it now, but I'll put it on screen so you guys can go check it out and share some love. I uh, found this video where they were following a um, uh, Dr. McDougall uh, recipe, and the lady does a great job. I've changed the recipe slightly. Um, so. It's a little bit updated from what I've, uh, you know, kind of written down from that video, but that was the inspiration. Uh, so I just wanted to give the credit where it's due. And uh, we'll get into the ingredients. Very basic things, and some of these things are optional. So if you don't have them, um, feel free to not use them or just, you know, revert back to a kind of more basic uh, version of the recipe if you'd like. And uh, also you can switch out some things, which I'll get into as we go along. So basically what you want to do is have some kind of applesauce. Uh, I'm actually going to be using pear sauce today. This was from our garden. Um, the uh, pear trees that we had had a great uh, harvest uh, last year. So we canned a bunch and this is a one of, one of the jars from that. So I'm using um, basically pear sauce instead of applesauce, but it basically works great with either. I've done it with both. You need um, cornmeal, you need some kind of flour. I'm gonna actually be doing a combination of flour. So I'm gonna have a whole wheat flour, a white flour, and then I'm gonna use uh, some oats ground up uh, to make oat flour. Um, but you could just use plain white flour or all whole wheat flour. It, it doesn't really matter that much, honestly. I've, I've done the recipe um, with a multiple, um, you know, different ways and they're all great. You need a little um, bit of uh, baking soda, but I just have a big bag of it, but you don't need anywhere near that, just a little spoonful. Um, we got a little bit of quinoa. You could use um, uh, different things as well. I've done the recipe with several different variations. You can use uh, spelt, you can use um, uh, buckwheat, you could use uh, couscous, um, and you know anything that's kind of similar to this, I'm sure it would work uh, well uh, with other things as well. So, um, and then you need a little bit of sugar to taste and, um, and a little pinch of salt, and then a tiny bit of uh, uh, what do you call it? Vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar. So that's the ingredients. We're going to jump right in. You need a big mixing bowl and then something to cook it in. This makes a huge batch, so you could easily have this recipe if you find this to be too big or you don't have enough, um, you know, uh, kids and grandkids or anything else around that uh, anybody else around that you want to share with. So um, yeah, it's kind of a big recipe. You'll you'll see in a, in a minute. So um, yeah, feel free to have everything, and I'll uh, probably put up the list of the ingredients maybe at the end or something in one um, fell swoop. So if anybody's re-watching it later, you can just, you know, jump to that part or something and not have to re-watch the video. So anyway, let's get into it and I'll show you guys the uh, the amounts for each thing. So I'm just going to mix everything in one big bowl. Uh, I do all the dry ingredients first and then add the wet ingredients last and then just stir everything up. Uh, I, I always mix the dry ingredients a little bit beforehand. So um, yeah, that's it. So uh, we're gonna add four cups of cornmeal first. That's two, I'm gonna do two more and I'll show you guys the next ingredients. So we've got um, about one cup of whole wheat flour, half a cup of white flour, and I'm gonna put in another half a cup of oat flour that I'm making with the handy dandy coffee grinder here. You guys have probably seen in many videos, I use this all the time to make uh, homemade oat flour. Um, you could just use all one type of flour. It's two cups basically in total. So do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter that much. I've done it all with white flour, done it with all whole wheat flour. Um, I, I like the oat flour, but you can't put too much of it. It kind of changes the texture a little bit too much. So uh, I use that, you know, sparingly and just for, you know, additional kind of flavor. And I, I just like using oat flour. So, uh, but yeah, like I say, you can just do it what you want. But uh, yeah, just uh, toss in your oats and uh, give this a, a little go here. Hold on. There we go. And you can see that you pretty much have oat flour in seconds. So yeah, let's just get that up to two uh, cups and add it into the cornmeal. 
quick word here about the um, optional ingredient. As I said, uh, we're gonna do about three quarters of a cup of uh, millet, spelt, you know, buckwheat, whatever um, kind of additional grain you want. I'm gonna be using quinoa. Um, it's three quarters of a cup by the recipe as I saw it, um, but it wasn't really specified whether it has to be cooked or not. So sometimes I have boiled it beforehand, um, but obviously then the amount uh, drastically changes because once this absorbs water, it expands quite a bit. So three quarters of a cup, uh, you know, boiled or already cooked is going to be way less um, in total from the, you know, from the dry. This is one little package that you saw uh, here and it's not even quite three quarters of a cup but it will definitely expand as it absorbs moisture. So um, take that for what you will. And since it's optional, it does work with or without it. I do wanna say a quick note though about it. If you boil it ahead of time, um, it will obviously become kind of soft. If you don't boil it ahead of time, you just add it as a dry ingredient like this, like I'm going to today. Um, it does give kind of this extra little bit of a, I don't know, gritty texture, like a little bit of a, something to chew on for the um, cornbread. I actually kind of like that sometimes, I kind of don't sometimes, so it's, it, it depends on my mood of how, what I'm feeling like. Um, quinoa is also really soft, so it definitely will um, kind of soften up. Couscous is also, it works great if you want to add it as a dry ingredient because it will soften really um, well. But uh, the, um, the spelt or millet, that will actually kind of stay a little bit kind of crunchy. So you get just this little bit of extra crunch in the uh, cornbread. So you may or may not like that, and that's why I'm just giving you that word of warning. But I'm just gonna add this dry uh, for this, um, you know, for this time around. But uh, but be aware of that so that if you don't like um, any kind of like you know crunchy texture um, in there, then you should definitely you know boil it ahead of time. Uh, all of these things that I've mentioned, they will um, cook super super fast. So basically, by the time the water boils, you're ready to go. And um, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. And also, I know I forgot to mention at the beginning, but I am preheating the oven while I'm mixing all these ingredients to 175 uh, Celsius, which is about 350 Fahrenheit. Um, and maybe I'll put that on the screen in the beginning of the video, just in case I forgot. So um, yeah, the, let's get the next ingredients and I'll show it to you next. Okay guys, so you wanna do one uh, teaspoon salt and you wanna do one tablespoon um, baking powder. So that is just something that needs to go in there to help it rise. Okay, now the thing here with the sweetening sweetener, um, this is the part that's kind of, uh, you know, you can do it a bunch of different ways. I've done it with um, maple syrup or agave syrup in the past. Um, you can use other kinds of sweeteners. You could kind of optionally skip any of the sweeteners and just rely on the applesauce for sweetening. Um, you could, uh, you know, do some other kind of fruit potentially. Um, or, you know, you can just uh, use regular plain sugar. I'm going to use just regular plain sugar, so I'm gonna add it now to the dry ingredients. But obviously, if you were doing one of the, um, you know, other syrup options that I mentioned, you would add that to the wet ingredients, just so that it's easy to mix this. So uh, we're gonna add the sugar. So I'm doing three quarters of a cup of sugar, um, just regular brown, um, what is it, raw, or whatever it's called, unrefined brown sugar. Um, you could do, like I say, the maple syrup. You still want to do about three quarters of a cup. Uh, this is going to give you a mildly sweet taste. If you have a real sweet tooth, you probably want to do more. Maybe even do like a cup and a half or so, I would say, if you're kind of on the sweet side. Uh, you can obviously do less if you're not um, so much of a sweet tooth. You could skip the whole thing. I'm sure I would probably um, like it like that as well, but most of the people in, in the family here, they prefer it a bit sweeter, especially the kids. Uh, for obvious reasons so um so yeah i tend to just add about you know three quarters of a, of a cup of sugar now i'm gonna mix this all up um just to make sure all the ingredients are incorporated i don't have a spoon i'll do that in a second and uh, then we're gonna prep the wet ingredients i'll show it to you guys and we'll combine them all just stirring it up you don't even really have to be too thorough about it but it just makes it makes it uh, easier to do it while it's dry uh, versus when the wet ingredients are being incorporated. You won't get, um, you know, clumps that uh, don't get mixed up. Speed here, I got a little bit of salt or baking soda, I don't know. It's just easier to kind of get everything mixed up when it's dry. And then uh, 
adding the wet ingredients won't make things clumpy maybe you know with like bits of flour or um, you know baking soda or something like that like stuck in one place that's the only reason to do this you could use a blender I guess too when you add all the wet ingredients I've done that in the past too but I think it's just a little bit unnecessary you don't really need to do that so that's that's pretty much good I don't really see any inconsistent areas at this point so we need three cups of uh, plant milk of choice. Soy milk works great, rice milk, etc., oat milk, whatever. Uh, I don't actually have any store-bought um, plant milk at home today, so I'm gonna make my own. It's ridiculously easy, guys. I've done recipes before um, from quite a, f ah, quite a while ago. I think it was a few February dairies um, back, probably two or three years ago now. Um, I showed you guys how to make uh, plant milk, but uh, lately, and especially for things like baking, I actually do a simplified version where I don't even remove the pulp because it just doesn't matter in the baked good. You can just add it as it is. So what I've done is I've just dumped in probably a little bit, um, maybe less than 100 milliliters worth of oats. I'm going to fill this up to pass the liter mark with water and then I'm just going to um, blend this with a, just a pinch of salt with a stick blender here. Sorry for the noise. And um, I'm just going to dump the whole contents of it as it is into um, the mix here and we're gonna add the applesauce and the rest of the wet ingredients. So I'll show you guys uh, in a second. I'm just gonna blend this with water um, and we'll get it up to three um, cups. So I'll show that to you in a second. So that's pretty much it. I might blend this for a couple more seconds, but that that is pretty much it. I'm gonna just dump it as it is. I'm not gonna separate out the pulp. It works completely fine. I've done this many times with various uh, baked goods and uh, works out great. So this is about uh, just a little over two cups. So I'm gonna do another half batch and I'm gonna add that in as well. And uh, then we'll add the applesauce. I'm just gonna start kind of pouring it in and start mixing it a little bit. might not even add a full three cups of the plant milk. I'm gonna watch the consistency and I'm probably gonna add the applesauce next. I don't wanna make it too, too runny. So yeah, it's starting to look pretty good already. I'm gonna add the applesauce. Let's get it in the spoon. I said applesauce, but it's pear sauce. Like I said, pear sauce, applesauce, it doesn't really matter. It's just for added, um, you know, kind of sweetness. And of course, texture and moisture as well. It's incorporating pretty nicely. I might not even really add any more plant milk. I might do a tiny bit more. This is already looking pretty good. Some of the moisture will obviously be absorbed too by the, uh, the quinoa. I'm gonna add a little bit more, I gotta make some more. I made about another cup worth of uh, plant milk here with the oats. I'm gonna add maybe about half and mix it in. See what the consistency comes out to. I can probably add the full amount if I'm going to. You can see the pulp there at the bottom. It's fine. Okay, perfect. That looks great. So we're just gonna add the vinegar. Should be two teaspoons. I'm just gonna quickly eyeball it here. Unless you go crazy, it's not that critical. <laughs> Stir it up a little bit more and we're ready to put it into our baking sheet. Or pan, I should say, baking pan. 
Okay, now, as I've mentioned, um, this is a huge batch. Uh, this is a really, really big amount. Um, if you have like a massive uh, baking pan, I imagine you could do this in one big batch. I actually don't like doing that because what happens is you end up with a really thick uh, cornbread, which some people like. Um, I, I don't mind it, but uh, what I don't like is that it's kind of hard for me to gauge when it's done in the middle. And um, you might end up with kind of crispy top and under um, baked, uh, you know, middle section, and I don't like that. So what I end up doing is kind of splitting the batch between one, uh, I would say, medium to large, um, you know, baking pan here. What is that? I don't know, maybe like 12 inches uh, on the long side um, versus, I don't know, maybe like eight inches across or something like that. And, uh, and then I end up doing a few muffin uh, forms as well. So what I'll do is I'm going to fill um, what I can in the muffin forms here and then whatever's left over I'm going to put in the pan. Uh, it just works out better that way for me because it's not as tall in here and uh, it's easier for it to cook all the way through. Plus the first batches from the muffin sheets or the muffin forms I should say come out faster so the kids are ready to eat them sooner. So that's kind of why I do that. Uh, your mileage may vary. You can put it in one big huge um, pan or do two medium pans or whatever, but uh, this is the way I do it. But you know, you can obviously change that to how, how you want. So let's get these filled up. Then I'm gonna show you one more optional ingredient, which I love adding, and then we'll throw them in the oven. So you can see I filled them up. Um, don't go crazy. I probably put a little too much in a couple of them. Um, they do rise a little bit, so you don't want them like um, super, super full. I try to leave a little bit of space on each one uh, with varying degrees of success. I used a uh, ladle uh, to make it easier and neater, but for the big pan here, I'm just gonna pour it straight out of here and then um, just scoop in, you know, whatever's, rest, uh, whatever's left in here. And um, yeah, we'll just uh, get the optional ingredients here at the top. So that's you in a second. So that's what they look like. And now I'm gonna show you guys the optional ingredients. I'm gonna take some frozen blueberries and also some frozen sour cherries and I'm gonna put these kind of on the top. I don't um, like to incorporate them into the mix, into the batter, because what I find is that uh, kind of colors the whole cornbread, especially the blueberries. They, they kind of turn the whole thing almost green because of the blue and the yellow mix. And uh, I just don't think it looks as appetizing, although I've done that um, many times before and it's still fine, but uh, I just think it looks nicer with the clean kind of yellow against the fruit and just leaving the fruit at the top. Uh, it sinks in a little bit, but not as much, and it doesn't kind of color the whole um, you know, cornbread itself. So that's why I kind of leave it for the top. The other thing is that obviously you can replace this with whatever kind of fruit of your choice. And uh, in the summer, when we were uh, harvesting the pears, I actually made this recipe a couple times and I put some sliced uh, pears and apples at the top, which is some you know, brown sugar at the top. And uh, man, that was incredible. Uh, just absolutely amazing. So that's just another thing to keep in mind that you can have obviously do it with fresh fruit as well. Like, um, you know, we had raspberries and things like that. Same thing. Uh, you can just add whatever you want. So let's get some fruit added and then we will uh, add a tiny little bit of sugar at the top as well. And we'll be off to the races. Throw the muffins in first. Let's go. I want to leave enough room so I can get some sour cherries in there too. So I don't want to add too, too many blueberries. You want to leave enough space <laughs> for everything. I mean, obviously you could add other things too. You don't have to just limit it to fruit. I'm sure chocolate chips or something else would work great as well, but uh, I haven't done that before. I imagine that would work pretty good though too. Obviously, if you were to do this in the spring, you might be able to do it with fresh cherries. That would be great too. All right, and we're just gonna get some brown sugar on there. And we'll be done. Be ready to go. 
Don't want to go too crazy. I mean, you know the kids like it when they're a little bit sweet, but I think the fruit should provide most of the sweetness in it and the apple or pear sauce in this case. If you have really tart fruit, it might be really nice to add a little bit of sugar as well. If you have like really, really sour raspberries or, or even the blueberries can sometimes be pretty sour. I find when, I when I'm using the frozen kinds from the store. All right, that's it. Let's get the uh, muffins in first. I find that uh, usually about 20 minutes will do it. Uh, I'm gonna stop it after 20 minutes and then I'll show you guys what they look like and we'll see if that's enough. Okay guys, so that was pretty much 20 minutes exactly. I think they're looking perfect. Um, if anything, like I said, I shouldn't have filled them so much because you can see, especially with the fruit on top, uh, some of it kind of spilled out to the side a little bit, but uh, it's not a tragedy, but obviously something that uh, you know, you can look out for it in the, in the future if you're doing it. Just leave a little bit of extra space because they do kind of rise up a little bit. So um, I'm going to let these cool off a little bit and then we'll take them out. And meanwhile, I've thrown in the baking pan uh, with the rest of the mix, which is really kind of the majority of the batter. I'm going to give that probably like at least 45, 50 minutes before I even check it. I think it usually takes close to an hour, but I will take a look after 45 minutes and we'll see what it's looking like and then we'll make a decision and uh, potentially put it back in. So we'll check on it again. All right guys, sorry for the very poor lighting here. The sun has gone down, so I'm all uh, artificial light uh, at this point. But uh, 45 minutes uh, seems to have done the trick uh, today. So uh, my wife and I just checked it with the needle test. Um, none of the uh, batter has been stuck to the uh, needle, so it's looking pretty nice and crispy on the edges. The center seems good, so I'm just going to let this cool and call it a day. I um, haven't picked those out yet, but I think what we'll do is through the magic of time travel, I will show what this looks like in the morning so that we have better light with which to see the beauty of the fruit and the cornbread. So um, we'll fast forward time in a second. And just like that, through the magic of time travel, we are now in the morning. I would say at least maybe half of the muffins have been eaten. <laughs> they are delicious. Um, got a bunch left though. And we got the main um, you know, baking pan here uh, still ready to be eaten. So um, I think it came out really good. I can't say enough good things about this recipe. I just absolutely love the uh, texture and taste of it. It's really good. I definitely think it's better than the previous video uh, recipe that I shared with you guys. Um, check this one out if you if you are interested. Uh, you can see the little um, quinoa um, bits here and there. That wouldn't really be as visible if you pre-cook uh, them, but I, I don't mind them like I say. I think just try both and see what you prefer. I kind of like this little added uh, texture that it gives when you don't boil them sometimes, but sometimes I do. It just depends on my mood. So yeah, let's get uh, let's get a slice of this one uh, put out on a plate and I'll show it to you guys. So there you guys go. Um, it's a wonderful recipe. Can't say enough good things about it. Give it a try. Um, depending on the fruits you put in there, you may need more or less time in the oven, uh, especially with the with the pan. And like I say, this this recipe, if you were to pour it all into one huge pan, I, I don't know what the cooking time would be, but I'm sure it would be a lot. I actually kind of um, really like doing the muffin forms because it's convenient and easy to go and you can just grab one. And, um, you know, I definitely kind of would recommend that. You know, the baking time is also much, much lower because there's less of it kind of in, you know, in a batch. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, um, it's a really great treat. You know, you can make it as healthy as you want by, you know, just reducing the amount of uh, sugar in there. I do think it still tastes uh, great even with no sugar. I have done it that way before, but uh, certainly I think for kids and for people who have a sweet tooth, it might be more palatable with a little bit of sugar added. You can mess around, like I say, with different kinds of uh, sweeteners. But uh, in either way, in either case, I think it's a, it's a great recipe. Give it a shot. No oil. Super easy. Uh, the you know the longest thing that I guess takes uh, a bit of time is to just wait for the thing to bake. <laughs> but like mixing all the ingredients is virtually 
you know, no time. It's just really easy. It takes just a couple minutes to put it together. So, so yeah, that's it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel if you're not signed up. And I'll see you in another video soon. And thanks everybody for your support. Bye. Thank you.